Hey everyone, so today we're picking off on the last tutorial um, with just the solid. As you can see, I haven't changed much, it's just the solid. I haven't changed anything at all, not much. So what I'm going to do is, I'm actually going to create kind of a skeletal condition within this. More of a, kind of a rib cage along it instead of a solid. So, I'm going to delete this. Um, path. Actually, before I delete this, I'm going to go over a few things with this script. Um, everything here is not set in stone, that's why I use number sliders. So let's say you want a higher count. All you have to do is change the range. I'm just going to make it 15 for right now. And all you do is slide it, and it gives you more, um, more layers, as you can see. And if you want, instead of a... Let's say I didn't want a square anymore. I wanted a pentagon. You just change the size to 5, and it'll do that. Or also I want the hexagon shape, and 6. Let's say if I wanted to do a 180 degree turn, just set the range to 180. And since I'm already in here, I'm just going to change it to 180 in here. And as you can see, it does this twist. So how about we do this crazy twist, actually, that we have right here. We're going to make it kind of a, a spine, a, not a spine, a skeletal kind of condition, kind of ribbed this sectional rib. So you'll see what I'm saying when I'm doing this. So actually, let's pull up a precedent. No. Um, let's do this. Is this working? Okay, it's loading. I'm gonna pull up something real quick. That's what I'm looking for. Okay, I can't find it right now. Um, sorry about that. <laughs> I could not find it. Um, so, uh, yeah, sorry about that. I just couldn't find it right now. I, it's basically what we're going to do is um, take this shape offset it, offset the curves just to create a, a thickness so it has this kind of a rib cage to it. So right now I'm just going to delete these two uh, loft and reps because all I want really is this line work. This line work I recognized when I was learning this that line work is more important than a solid in grasshopper. It's a lot easier to manipulate line work in grasshopper than is solids in grasshopper. So keep everything usually line work is the best in my opinion so um we have these kind of curves so what we're going to do is we're going to do an offset command offset and we're going to do this one because these are curves and these are surfaces so we're not doing the surfaces we're just doing the curves so it's saying curve distance plane corner so the plane's already established so i don't need to do that geometry and right now it's offsetting it exterior on the exterior side um, so I want it to actually offset inside of the, um, so you can see it's offsetting outwards. I actually want to offset inside of the solid. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do um, a negative because I want, right now it's doing a positive. So I'm going to do a negative and just pick a number, probably, I'll do an eighth of an inch. So 0 0.125 it should be fine. And right now, as you can see, it does an eighth of an inch right there. So once I offset that curve, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a boundary surface. So right now I'm going to create a surface with these, with this geometry right here, and I'll create a surface with this geometry. So what, to create a surface between lines, what you want to do is type in boundary surface, and just ask for the edges of the line, and literally you just drag it here, and it creates a surface. So as you can see, these are kind of like pancakes now. Pancakes are good boundary surfaces and we do that too so you're asking how does this really achieve anything all you did was make surfaces you're right all I did was make surfaces 
So what we're going to do is we're going to use these two surfaces in order to uh, create that kind of skeletal cage. So in order to do that, we're going to do a we're going to do a boundary difference. Oh no, it's going to be a it's one of these. I don't quite remember because I usually type it in. It's going to be a region difference. There we go. Sorry, a region difference. Let's do it with actually it's asking for curves, not solids. Okay, my bad. So it's asking for curves, so we're going to do these curves. We're going to do the rotate curves and the offset curves. My bad, guys. Don't do the boundary difference yet. The boundary difference is just for the end part. So I'm I'm sorry about that, guys. Um, so we're going to take this rotated geometry and this offset geometry. So the, this curve and this curve. So we're going to do, it's asking for the bigger curve and then the smaller curve. So the bigger curve and the smaller curve. And it'll create this. Um, condition. So now we're going to do a boundary surface. As you can see, it should make, yep, and it makes just those, um, just that articulation right there, as you can see. Just this kind of ribbed area. Then what we're going to do is extrude the surface. So in order to extrude it, we're going to just type in extrude. So just the first one right here. Um, you would only use, I've only ever used this other one, but uh, extrude right here. So it's asking for the base, so we're going to pick a base, and it's asking for a direction. So we're going to say Z, because we want to move it up, and there we go. But now it's too thick, so I don't want them that thick. I want them only like an inch, let's say. Maybe an inch is too big, not an inch. How about 0 0.25, which is a fourth of an inch. Yep, that's right. And I actually want more of them because this doesn't read anything right now. You can only see it kind of. So I want more pieces. So I'm going to go back to my number slider and get more of those. And I'm actually going to lower the spacing because I don't like that. There we go. And that's reading a little better. So I'm going to change the sides to 4, just because it reads, a, I think it reads better with 4. It's, all, it's also due to the like kind of sheer rotation we have. So, there we go. So that's what I'm talking about. So this kind of sectional, not sectional, this ribbed kind of condition, this ribbed condition that's created as a result of uh, taking the differences between the two curves. So I'll go over that real quick since that was a little confusing and I did make a mistake because I thought it was surfaces not curves and that's why I'm bad. So starting off from here, this is the rotated geometry, the lines. So I'm going to turn these off just for the sake of you guys. So we have the rotated geometry and what we're going to do now is uh, what we did was we offset in the lines the rotated geometry lines. So actually, let me turn both back on. So you can see that it adds a thickness, but the, you're asking, why don't we just loft these two curves together that way? If you loft them together, it doesn't look like that. It it will look it'll just read it as one surface, and it will not work. So I'll actually show you guys that real quickly. So if I loft these two together. It just reads as one solid, and it doesn't really work out. As you can see, it doesn't really loft it together at all. So, it creates a solid, and that's not what we want. So, what we had to do was we had to take the difference between the two curves. So, what we did was we did, um, we took the area of the bigger curve and the area of the smaller curve and subtracted the smaller curve area out. So, basically, it's like a carving. So, all we did was carve out this entire area and only left this articulation, which is what we wanted. And then what we did was, that was the region difference. Then we added a surface in between these. After we added that surface, we just extruded it. As you can see, it's just extruded. Oh. And this tutorial, I guess um, I'll teach you guys how to put it in Rhino. Right now it's all in Grasshopper, so if you close it, it won't actually show back up. You're like, where did my work go? Ah, so grasshopper, it's still there. Don't worry. 
until you close Rhino out. So what you want what to create your geometry and to actually put it onto Rhino, we're going to right click and we're going to bake. Now you can use the the scroll bar to bake it, and I'll show you why not to do that way uh, just in a minute. So when I bake it, it'll ask me for all this stuff, where layer you want to put it on, all that stuff. I usually just put it on default. It doesn't matter. Uh, I always group them all because when you don't, it makes it really confusing. So yes, please. And now it is in Rhino. So let's see. We can kind of turn this on shaded and zoom selected. As you can see, we now have that articulation happening, which is really nice. It actually looks really nice. It also reads really nicely. So, um, the reason why you don't want to bake the other way is when you bake it this way, it doesn't group them all. So it, you have to highlight everything. Now you're like, oh, no big deal. Just do this. But when you start to work in Grasshopper more, it gets very confusing when you're trying to make a bunch of iterations. So just grouping them makes everything easier. Just trust me on this one. So we're going to delete that. And yeah. So yeah, guys, that's a tutorial for this one. It's just basically a part 2B, if we want. I'm going to call it that. Because it's basically the same problem. I just split it up into two parts. <clears throat> so yeah, guys. Uh, thank you guys for watching. And I'll see you guys on the next part.